speaking to the infusion reactions, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what that looks like, when you see them, and what kinds of reactions have you seen? So it is like, you know, I think in the healthcare industry, we've been working with monoclonal antibodies for many, many, over 25 years for now. So it's a lot of your anaphylaxis or your hypersensitivity reactions. You're going to see patients get nasal congestion, which I think is not as captured. Many patients may blame the nasal congestion on allergies or they feel like they're coming on with a cold, but it was something that was really driven by the antibody. Um, you'll see them get chills, rigors, shortness of breath. Some people will complain of the tingling of the throat or of the lips themselves. But interesting, one big side effects that was slightly different than most antibodies that I have seen in my uh, experience is that patients on the first infusion would complain about severe bone pain whether it was in the long bones, the hip, the back, the chest, um, or they would have this diarrhea experience compared to other antibodies. So those are things that you'll see. Usually about 30 to 40% of patients will have some type of adverse event or some type of side effect. But I will say after they're exposed to the monoclonal antibody, to daratumumab, by the time they get to their second week, that second infusion, they will not have another uh, adverse event. It drops down to actually to 2%. Yeah, and to clarify, usually what we, to try to distinguish the usual adverse events that we see in oncology and myeloma from this initial dose issue or the first few doses, we really try in clinical trials, they're often described and categorized as infusion-related reaction or IRR to distinguish from other, say, adverse events such as neutropenia, fevers, uh, et cetera. So, IRR is a, exactly, it's really the first few doses effect. And how do you, I think for somebody who hasn't given a lot of monoclonal antibodies or perhaps may not be used to um, the nature of DARA, uh, sometimes people do get a little concerned. So if somebody does have a reaction like bronchospasm or some shortness of breath, what do you do at the bedside? Yeah, so, and, it, and those side effects to go back can happen within five minutes can happen and usually, typically that we've been seeing the side effects occur within the first 90 minutes. And we'll talk about how the infusion goes. Usually when the infusion rate changes from 50 cc's to 100, within 20 minutes or low, you'll see some side effects occur, but it can last up to seven hours before the first reaction can occur. So for your new um, exposure, your new healthcare provider who's not seen monoclonal antibodies, you want to assure them that these are very typical side effects. They're very common. Um, with monoclonal antibodies as a group. Um, you want them to stop the infusion. You want to call your healthcare provider and you want to give the appropriate medication depending on the side effect that you're uh, dealing with. So if they're feeling very short of breath, you may want to give them a little more fit or a little more steroid at that time to help mediate. Um, you can also, if they feel um, very itchy or rash, some patients have developed rashes, you may want to give them some type of Benadryl to help, again, that particular side effect. Um, we have used Demerol in the past for rigors or chills too, um, and which can be help mitigate that. Very small doses and the patients resolve very quickly. So the goal is to act upon the side effect. You want to wait about a half hour to 40 minutes and see if the side effect resolves and then reinitiate the medication, the daratumumab, but you want to start it at half the rate of when the reaction occurred. So if it was at 100 cc's an hour, you're going to restart them back at 50 cc's, wait an hour, and then escalate it. Perfect. I think um, you covered a lot of the bedside management issues with DARA. Uh, I think some of the other things to just be mindful of are, especially in somebody who's practicing perhaps in a community center, uh, the, the infusion time may be quite limited. So by the time somebody comes in, they often need labs, the drug has to be mixed, and then they give the pre-meds and the drug is held. These infusion-related reactions, if the median infusion time of the first dose is six to eight hours, you can run into trouble. So some of the things that people have done in the community are to do split dosing, so day one and day two, so just to mix half the bag the first day and then second half the next day. That's also important. We learned in the inpatient setting because often, uh, and we'll talk more about this later um, in the seg uh, ses discussion, but the nursing implications, but often in an inpatient, if uh, a nurse as a patient who has an allergic reaction and um, they've decided to pause and run it slowly, the, the stability of DARA is about 15 to 16 hours. So if it's not like some of the other monoclonals, which can be run slowly over a day if, if they're in the patient. So I think 
One important bedside uh, issue uh, is the time of infusion. And so sometimes people do split dosing. And there's some also emerging data uh, of rapid uh, DARA, which is 90 minute infusion uh, after they finish those first three doses. Um, and that's been published and, and done in a lot of settings, but it still, again, requires an IV uh, and has that 90 minute. And I think the other important thing is in spite of all of this discussion about infusion related reactions, uh, I'm curious to see if Danny agrees but I, even if patients have had significant reactions, I have never not been able to give DARA uh, after getting through those initial few doses uh, because of allergic issues or hypersensitivity. I think these re um, infusion-related reactions are typically manageable and eventually uh, well-tolerated and we can resume standard dosing. Danny? Absolutely, I agree. I think sometimes you may have more than one reaction within the first infusion, depending on each reaction, but absolutely, you can also, at the discretion, you know, um, sometimes we've actually dose reduced it. So instead of being 16 milligrams per kilogram is what the actual dosing indicated dose is, we've um, started patients at four milligrams per kilogram in, in fluid to see if they can almost desensitize them to the daratumumab to escalate it up so that they can receive the drug at full dose. The other thing... Go ahead. The other thing that we've done here too, and at Mount Sinai too, is that we can concentrate the volume. Yep. Besides split dosing, which is a great option for the communities that do not have long infusion bed chair time, um, this allows our patients who have severe renal insufficiency or, or congested heart failure can still limit the fluids. Can, can you tell us a little bit more about that? So it's standard volume versus concentrated, what are we talking about? Well, standard volume is in a healthy individual is a liter for the first dose. And if they tolerate it well, then it is actually decreased, the fluid is decreased to 500 cc. So you've doubled the concentration of the medication, but the same volume or same dosage. Um, and it stays at 500 milliliters throughout their entire time experiencing it. It's given weekly for eight weeks in a row. And then on the ninth week, it goes for every other week for another eight doses and then monthly for our patients. So it's eight doses weekly, eight doses every two weeks, and then monthly, as long as they tolerate it and the, or they don't have progression of disease. But when you start talking about patients for concentrated, you're really looking at the, the best dosage for the volume by their weight. And it has to be done, the pharmacy will calculate by their weight to see if they get the right volume. 